Hi. So today what we're going to do is we're going to go over absolute value inequalities. We're going to go over, let's say, when an absolute value is greater than a certain number or if the absolute value is less than a certain number. Okay, so these are the two examples we're going to look at. But before we look at these two examples, let's just review what happened when the absolute value actually equaled a certain number. Well, we knew that that meant either the absolute value of x equals 3 or the absolute value of x equals negative 3, right? We knew there would be two possibilities. We do the positive possibility and the negative possibility. We also knew that the rule said if the absolute value of ax plus b equals c, then either ax plus b equals c or ax plus b equal negative c, but c had to be greater than or equal to zero, right? So we're going to learn that in absolute value inequalities, the same restrictions on C exist. You never want your absolute value, well, you have to actually look at the example, but you never want your, your absolute value has to always equal a positive number. Okay, so let's see what happens when we have the absolute value of X is greater than three. So that either means, well, before I put that rule down, let's just look at the number line and let's think about it, okay? I'm gonna give us some target points just to look at. Negative five, negative three, zero, three, and five, okay? So what happens if, the, if X is negative five? Is that true or false? Well, the absolute value of negative five is five. Five is greater than three. So we know this works, right? Let's suppose we have negative four. The absolute value of negative four is four. Four is greater than three. So we know that works. How about the absolute value of three? Well, the absolute value of three is not greater than three, but if it had been greater than or equal to, this would work. So let's just say for now, greater than or equal to. And that means that we would have something that looks like this, because we also know negative six would work, negative seven would work, et cetera. So do we think that's the only answer? Are there any numbers that might work? Well, this says absolute value of X is greater than or equal to three. So do we think the number three would work? Well, yeah, the number three would work because three is equal to three. How about the number four? Well, the absolute value of four is four, and four is greater than three, so four would work. So we realize the answers that work are any numbers less than negative three or greater than positive three. So either x is less than or equal to negative three, or x is greater than or equal to positive three. And we clearly have an or inequality. And this is when we had the absolute value greater than three. Now, let's look at this one. The absolute value of x is less than three. So let's think of examples where the absolute value is gonna be less than three. So let's use some of the same target numbers, but we'll add some. We'll go zero and then we'll start two, three, four, okay? So is the absolute value of negative five less than three? No, because the absolute value of negative five is five. That's not less than three. That does not work. How about the absolute, we'll change this to less than or equal to make our lives easier. How about the absolute value of negative four? Well, the absolute value of negative four is four. Four is not less than or equal to three. But the absolute value of negative three is three and three is equal to three. So that works. Now, is the absolute value of negative two is two? Is two less than three? Yeah, 
So that works. Is zero less than three? Yeah, that works. Is two less than three? Yeah, that works. Is three less than three? Yeah, that works. Is four less than three? No. So it appears as if all of the numbers in between negative three and three work. And that to me looks like your classic, let's make this a better picture, a classic and inequality. So because whenever we start with a great absolute value being isolated and a greater sign, I think of or. Whenever we start where the absolute value is isolated and we have a less than sign, that's what I like to think about. So the way we're going to do these absolute value inequalities, we're going to remember greater, if you start with a greater than sign, you're going to end up with a compound or inequality. And if we're starting with a less than, we're going to end up with a compound and inequality. So we think of the words greater and less than. Now, we did this just by trial and error. Let's see if there's a more efficient way to come up with our answer. Okay, so here, just like before, I have two absolute value bars, I'm gonna have two equations. This is gonna be just what you see. X is greater than or equal to three, or, and then this is gonna say X flip the sign less than or equal to change the sign. So we flip the sign, change the sign. And notice, even though I wrote it in a different order, we got the exact same equation. So let's look at this one. Here, we write exactly what we see for the first one. For the second one, we change the direction of the sign and we make the other one negative. So X is less than or equal to three and it's greater than or equal to negative three, which can be written, remember, and inequalities can be written either way, that X is literally in between three and negative three. Okay, so that's absolute value inequalities. Now let's look and do one that's just slightly more complicated. And we'll say something like this x plus 5 is greater than greater than or equal to 7 okay so the absolute value sign is already isolated which means we're going to have two either x plus 5 is greater than 7 or x plus 5 i flip the direction of the sign and i make that negative and this answer becomes x is greater than or equal to two, or x is less than or equal to negative 12. So when we graph it, it's greater than two and less than negative 12. Let's just spot check and make sure we're right. So I'm gonna pick negative 13. Negative 13 plus five is negative eight. The absolute value of negative eight is eight. Eight is greater than seven. Let's pick three. Three plus five is eight. Eight is greater than seven. So it appears to work. Okay, so that's your classic greater one. Now let's try a less than one. This time I'll add a number on the outside, 15. Okay, so this is less than, which means I'm going to come up with two and I'm going to connect with the word and. So that means x plus seven is less than or equal to 15 and x plus seven, switch the direction, is greater than or equal to negative 15, okay? So this becomes x is less than or equal to eight and x is greater than or equal to negative 22. So that means our answer has to be in between negative 22 and eight. So let's see if these work. Okay, 
If it's, let's say, what's in between negative 22 and 8? Well, 0 is. So 0 has to work. So 0 plus 7, is that less than or equal to 15? Yes. Um, 7 is in between. Is 7 plus 7, the absolute value of that, less than or equal to 15? Yes. So all these answers work. So here we've had examples where we use less than and great tour. Okay, so that is your brief introduction to um, uh, absolute value inequalities.